When did you know it was time to move out of the basement setup? One was when the neighbors started complaining because there's no parking for customers to pick up. That's oh, one. really? So they're parking on the street? That's one. So when I hired my first two guys, like, and we were a solid 40 hours a week, I felt like we need to get a space. Mm -hmm. And then... Um, so you were full-time at that point? Yep. I was full-time at that point. in beautiful Hawaii, specifically Oahu. I'm actually in a parking garage right now, but we're heading over to Warrior Screen Printing to be able to hang out with them, check out their shop, see what's going on, and see what's up on the island of Oahu. Come take a look. Made it. We're at Warrior Printing out in Oahu, Hawaii. <laughs> Can hear the island music. Let's go in. This is Caleb Spencer, by the way. Um, also have Chris Echo, his co-host. Um, but we're also uh, here checking out Warrior Screen Printing. We're in Oahu, Hawaii. We started. Was it 2019? 2013. Yeah. And, and then we started off in a downstairs of my mother-in-law's house. Actually, we started off as a DTG. Our first um, machine in the game was a, the Anajet. Really? Which is still That's a different way to start. Still sitting in my garage. It got us to a point where we we're like, man, we can't print 300 shirts on this thing. You know, yeah. Front and back. So we got a manual. It lasted us like four months. And we're like me and my brother looked at each other like, there's no way. We tore down the entire downstairs of my mother-in-law's house. We tore down the kitchen, we tore down everything, like, Mom, I'm gonna use down here. And she's like, go ahead. Yeah. Well, we put our manual, we had this big brown dryer, uh, conveyor dryer, and then we bought in our auto four months later. And when I started in screen printing, I was running a dorm on campus with all the Outer Island kids. So our work time was really just after hours because when they're in school, we're not working. And then when they're out of school, we were working. So it allowed me to do screen printing during the day. So I was working that full time and then going back to the dorms working full time. Got it. I was coaching, obviously. One of my tasks was to um, get the football gear or get the basketball gear from the printers. And I found that the first guy I went through, his time frame sucked. I was just like, man, how is this guy taking forever? I mean, I guess it's a lot of shirts. So I didn't know the process. Maybe he has to grab the shirts and whatnot. That went down and I was like, you know what? I, maybe we need to find a new guy. Yeah. So we found a new guy. Same, same problems we, we ran into. He would take three weeks, four weeks. And then we try to reorder like a couple hundred and he's like, oh, you gotta wait three weeks again. I'm like, there's no way you already have what you need, right? So he's just running a bad shop. So did you print those yourself then? For the so team? the following year, yeah. I was like, you know what? Let's get this DTG machine. Cause I, I was doing a little bit of research. I was like, man, screen printing sounds expensive. Uh -huh. Unless I get a manual, but I'm not, I don't know how to push a squeegee, right? Right, right. I went in there blind, grabbed me a loan, and we started printing off an Anajet machine. Did you buy it new or did you buy it off somebody? I bought it brand new. I bought it for really? like, really? I bought everything. How much it was? Press, I think I spent like $28,000. If I could go back, I, obviously I would have just bought me a machine yeah. but, an auto, but I learned that's one process and there's one capability with that. Yeah. So we started off in our home in the dorms uh, up at the school. Yeah. And we started printing shirts for the football team. So I was pumping out couple thousand shirts for the football team on the direct to garment, the freaking direct -to -garment. Wow. so it was so sitting brutal. there and it was a front and back so you're like so the cool thing was that we could do custom shirts meaning like we could keep the booster print the same yeah maybe take off the model that they had on the mm -hmm. back and then we just print their name and number on the back and right. parents were loving it right that was our first step into the game and then they're like oh can you can you do 100 shirts we just want one color is it going to be cheaper we're like oh let's just do it right and that's when i knew i needed to get into screen printing because I was like, it's taking up so much cost and time to do white ink on, on a navy yep. blue shirt. Right. And it was taking forever. And then there's inconsistencies if you're not pre-treating it correctly. Mm -hmm. And then people wanted dry fit and we're like, we can't print on dry fit, we can't print on right. probably our performance wears. So it got me thinking that that's when we got into screen printing, bought me a used manual, which was $2,500. You still have it or no? Nope, I sold it. Over. Yeah, and then we went to a manual and then it was just me my dad would help out and then we got our first 300 shirt order and it was a two color front two color back uh -huh. it took us almost 24 hours to finish we had one flash uh -huh. unit yeah. it was it was like two days notice yeah and i was like nope i'm gonna, I'm gonna buy me a machine i have to 
And that's the workhorse, the first Freedom. Did you buy that one new or find it? We bought like, everything new. Okay. So even the Sabre downstairs, I, I love Was there a reason to buy it new or to buy it used? Um, well, we're in Hawaii, so it's a little bit different. It's not like people have models oh, just hanging so out. So there's really no liquidity. So by the time you ship it here, it's like it's an arm and a leg anyway. Right. But these are all overruns from all of our just jobs you done. Yeah, and it's all coming out. I mean, if you can tell, it's the K with our with the helmet on there. We do two um, pop ups a, a year, and on both pop ups we sell ninety percent of our stuff. It goes. Wow. We get invited to this what they call a whole which is like a big fundraiser for the school. We just happen to be able to sell our stuff there, and every year thus far we've sold out. Wow. So. That's our niche, is my high school, because it's a huge population. And for here, the bigger jobs that they don't ever go outside of the state of Hawaii. Got it. They won't. They won't have people bid from California or from Oregon or from Arizona. Sure. They'll just keep it here, just because the cost of just shipping it here is yeah. is the same thing. Back here is all of our inventory stuff. Oh, cool. So. Do you stage up here too, or count or? Sometimes when we're pulling orders, like for online orders, we yeah. bring it up here. All out here, we would have it laid out with the packing slip, the work order. We're slowly incorporating the shipping labels on there to stick on there. Right now we just right. make half sheets. Oh, okay. But I know you guys have something oh, yeah. that, I think you can print it out on print top, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so, the shipping okay. label and the uh, box label if you want. We just put this on. Oh, very cool. <laughs> on the screen, just so that the guy coming out can see the picture of the Monaco dark room right now. Oh, okay, so very cool. Yep. So we have the, not the auto, but the semi-auto scoop coder in the back. That helped out tremendously. Really? What do you feel like 2018 maybe the biggest challenge was? We just moved in here in the middle of um, the summer. So I think scaling is always the tough part. When you bring in more hands in the, in the shop, it's mm -hmm. always hard to um, duplicate yourself, I should say. So yeah. it, it really... It's like five people you can trust. And, you know, finding good people is one thing, but having the, the right systems, having the correct tools to to help mitigate the problems that exist because you're not streamlining everything. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, you're running off of what you know. We created all these makeshift on, on little postcards that we had like, okay, this is how you clean the screen. This is how you- Got it. This is how so you- So you give them screen. this whole copy of stuff when they first start? Well, I was just showing them first and I was just hoping they retain it. I was just right. like, yes, you're gonna, I'm gonna show you this once. There's a lot like, of steps and everything. Oh, it's a lot. Yeah. But it's whenever we bring in somebody new, I'm gonna retrain them. I wish we had created that manual. So on our downtime, we, we try to write out our systems. Printable helped us out big time. That's awesome. And it was what were you guys doing before? We were just doing manual. I mean, we were just writing on the calendar, but now we don't even keep up to date with this guy. Everything on Printable is up oh, Okay. Here. So we love it. I mean, I, That's think awesome I attribute a lot of our success in our organization and, and invoicing, which is cr critical now. Through print album, so thank you. Yeah, appreciate no, for it. real, it's it's been it's been a huge blessing in disguise. We're if you were to go back to a couple years ago, mm -hmm. with what you know now, what would you have done earlier to help improve your business that you know now? Well, I definitely would have read some books early on, profit first for sure. But if I had print album and ink soft from the very beginning, obviously, I think we would be same place where we are just maybe a little bit more busier I probably would have hired a graphic designer a lot faster to help own the full approvals yeah. process as a screen printer when you're starting off on your own you're basically a graphic designer yeah we use a couple other i should say third-party guys that, that do a lot of our graphics overseas mm -hmm. that helps too. and that does that work well oh that works super good which one um or is we, multiple we've, or? we've been through multiple ones but we use one guy on fiverr but those are the two key components right there got it and then um, having one person in house to help you with the mock up so they can get the negatives ready and whatnot. That frees up a lot of my time to do sales. Right. So. And that's what you want to focus on. It's just yeah, I like I like talking to people about sales. That's my strength. Got it. Is get, getting the contracts. Awesome. Yeah.